got some mighty fine coffee. Even if it's really, really weird. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Twin Peaks, the first season. Now, admittedly, some of you guys are really interested in what my interpretation of this season will be, and I will admit I'm not the biggest Lynch enthusiast. I watched Mulholland Drive years ago, and I still, to this day, I'm trying to figure out why I saw. So while watching this show, I was kind of accepting that there was gonna be some weird stuff. Would I understand it all the way? Possibly not. I had knowledge that it was coming. And the first episode really surprised me for up until about the last 30 seconds of it, the entire hour and a half first episode is a very grounded, very character-based sort of episode. We're learning about the people of the town through both their grief of Laura Palmer's death as well as Agent Cooper's interactions with them, who, by the way, Agent Cooper, the actor who plays him, this guy just does a very, very eccentric role. He is this off the beaten path, yet very positive, very unorthodox sort of methodologist to how he interacts with people, how he investigates crimes, and just his means of doing things is quirky, but still professional. And my God, the man loves coffee. I kind of wonder if he actually got sick of coffee from drinking it all the time on the show, or he just became a full on caffeine addict by the end of it. But as I said, the end of that episode, there is that little weird vision thing. And there are a few episodes here and there that are very weird, like the one where Cooper has his dream nightmare vision, where he sees the little midget guy, an older version of himself, Laura talking to him, and somehow is able to use these techniques from Tibet and whatnot. It kind of reminded me of that whole story arc where Batman went to Tibet and to the Himalayas to learn how to do certain things. And so I was kind of like, all right. Nah. Admittedly, it did lose me in the halfway point. And then I just so happened to start playing Alan Wake again for the first time in a long time. And my God, it helped me both appreciate Alan Wake more as well as kind of get more in tuned into the show. There's so many similarities between the two. Bright Falls is Twin Peaks. The weird light lady is the log lady. The idea of a seemingly peaceful, boring, very out of the way town holds far more secrets than anyone could imagine. And that's how the show progresses. We start to find out more about Laura Palmer. We find out more about her friends and her associates. We start to suspect multiple people. There isn't just one person, there's multiple people. And even at the end of the first season, you don't really think that they've gotten the guy who did it you have an idea of who they might have done it to, but there's still this ambiguity and this mystery that shrouds the show, and I do appreciate that. And something that a lot of people have commented on that they appreciate is that it doesn't spoon feed you. This show did kind of pave the way for more procedural full season arc story sort of setups of television shows. At the time it was really sitcom-y and one episode means nothing in comparison to the other ones or all their own thing. This was a continuative narrative and this did pave the way for shows like The Sopranos, Breaking Bad, all that business. Is it as clean cut as those shows are? Not entirely, but this was trying something new, right? I will say though that they do get the town aspect right. They get the idea that everyone knows everyone, but they also at the same time don't. Admittedly, the fact that it is an out of the way town, I don't understand how it has a massive mall inside it. <laughs> that, what's their name, the guy who's trying to burn the mill down by the property and make it ghost wood. He has this off the rails daughter who works at a, at a cosmetic store for a very short amount of time. The mall is massive that they're in. It's like, that would not exist in a town like that. Obviously, there are some creative liberties, but I did enjoy the show. Funny enough, I never got sick of the theme, even though they play it every single episode, and that's not including the opening credits. Love how it ends. I thought it was a great, great cliffhanger, and I imagine a lot of people were on edge. So in the end, I'm gonna give Twin Peaks a five out of seven. Yes, it's a little different from what people are used to, and some people who've watched shows that have come out in the last reason why, while may find Twin Peaks very slow, they will find that the camera quality is not as good, they will find that a certain aspects of it are very hokey, very corny, but again, this was something made in the 90s, the early 90s, literally 1990, so to see something like this be the way it was, be as mature as it is, even with its slight silliness here and there, it's still a pretty good benchmark. In the end, that's all for me guys, I hope you enjoyed this review, if you did leave a like and if you're interested in more, subscribe, I'll get around to season 2 eventually, but... We'll see. Anyways, that's all for me. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads.
It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.